In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're going to get your titles to stand out with this neon extrude text effect. And as you can see down here, there's only a handful of nodes, so it's quick to create. Let's get a new Fusion Comp here by right clicking and going to New Fusion Comp. How about that? So hit Create, and you can double click to jump in. So obviously, we're going to need some text. Click on the Text tool. I'm going to type neon and I'm going to click on the one view here and let's bring the size up and I'm going to use everybody's favorite font to pronounce Himogsikon, obviously. And if you want that, you could go to defont.com and this is that font. And to get this effect to work well, I'm going to want to have at least a little bit of rounding on some of these super sharp edges. So let's take this blur here and I'm going to blur it just slightly let me zoom in let's press 2 to preview our blur okay that should do it and now i want to get these edges to crisp back up a bit and i'm going to do that with this curves here so i'm going to click that because blur is already selected press 2 to preview that unchecking everything other than alpha and i'm going to take the alpha and click and drag the middle over here we're getting a nice crisp edge and a little bit of rounding now i want to add a very blur so shift spacebar color curves is still selected v-a-r-i we've got a very blur attached let's press 2 to preview it for this my goal will be to bring this up just to the point let's type 20 here give us a bigger slider i want to just to the point where it's mainly solid in the middle but it's starting to fade off at the edges so let's say we go too far with this maybe with 50 and it's just like completely fading out which we don't need it depends on your font and thickness and size so bring this to the point where it's basically at a solid white core and it has some nice fading of the edges and i think this value works for us with very blur selected i'm gonna hit my color curves and this is where we can have a lot of fun i want to first press 2 to preview it take this top part deselecting red blue and green we just got alpha and i'm going to hold down alt and drag this over here so my goal is to get rid of as much of the transparency as possible and if you go too far you're going to mess it up so i don't know it's okay if there's a little bit of transparency but i want to get rid of most of it now we get to go bananas with the colors i'm going to take the reds bring this up and my goal here is to get one color on the inside and another color on the sharp edges. Let's try the greens. This is completely up to you, whatever you think looks good. And I'm kind of liking the fact that I've got this separate color in these very sharp corners. And now let's take a look at the blue. And don't be afraid to add a bunch of points and do weird things. If it looks pretty good, go back to your original colors and see if you could add some more interesting details. That is pretty much what I want. Some interesting colors and a unique tip there. Okay, color curves is selected. Now let's shift spacebar and add a DUP duplicate node. This node is gonna do the heavy lifting for the effect. I'm gonna press two to preview it. So we've got two copies, but let's get 20 copies in here and all the copies are right on top of each other. So we gotta offset it a little bit to see uh, what it's gonna be doing. Get the spacing how you want. Okay, let's call that good. And then we could come in here and adjust the size. Let's put it up slightly, 1.005. Five. Now we're getting somewhere, except our text is kind of getting a little bit off screen. So let's go back text and take the size down a wee bit. Okay, now let's grab our duplicate node again and drop down this gain. Take this slider here and start bringing it down just a little bit. And you can see we're getting an interesting fall off of color. We could do the same thing with the blue. You could do the same thing with the green, with the blue. But note that you want to be subtle with this or you're going to completely tint everything. So let's take some of these back a little bit. Now let's check merge under. Turn these sliders up a bit here. Take this one down. So you can see the blend fade the effect into the background. If we click up here, uncheck checker underlay looks a lot better. And now that we're getting closer to our final look, you could come back in and start adjusting some of these color sliders here. 
See if you get something interesting. You could adjust the size. It's a lot of fun. Also your position. We could do left and right if we want to. You could adjust the amount of copies if you want less or more. It's also not a bad idea to come back into this color curves node and see, I'm just gonna turn these all on just so I could quickly see if I can get any kind of interesting results with these new settings here. And what would a neon effect be without glow? So you could use any of the pre-built glows type GLOW. You got a few different options. I'm gonna use this one here. You can get this free from Reactor, but these top three are also pre-built in glows. They work great and they probably will render faster than this X glow, but I like this X glow. I'm gonna press two to preview that and it's usually too bright. Adjust the threshold up here and this one over here. So fewer things glow, take the saturation up for the source. I think that might be good. And if our glow is a little bit too red, we could take the red slider, bring that down. We could look at the green slider. That looks pretty good. All right, blue slider. Most of our glow is blue, so I think we want to keep this high. What you could do now is just boost up the colors. Shift space bar, color gain, and then just go through these tabs. So I'll just fast forward so you don't have to watch me fiddle around with all of these. Okay, so here is our color gain. Now all you need to do is connect it to the media out and we could do a little before and after, just a little bit more dramatic of a look.